Hi, ArcfieldWeather.com meteorologist Paul Doring here on Monday morning, April 3rd. We've had back-to-back -back weeks now with severe weather outbreaks, uh, both of which came in the latter part of the week. It looks like this time we'll have another severe weather outbreak, probably from later tomorrow into the day on Wednesday. Again, it looks like it'll be centered at least initially over the uh, Mississippi Valley region and then shift to the Ohio Valley uh, by the time we get to the day on a Wednesday. This is the latest uh, Storm Prediction Center probability outlook for severe weather on Tuesday and Tuesday night. And again, the focus is uh, right along that uh, Mississippi River Valley region, really from Texas, Louisiana, all the way up to the uh, Iowa and uh, southern part of Wisconsin with a little bit of an enhancement here over Iowa and western Illinois. We'll see how this unfolds over the next uh, 6 to 12 hours or so. Typically in these kind of outbreaks the uh, threat becomes more and more enhanced as we get closer to the time frame. We'll go into the day on Wednesday and that threat will shift into the Ohio Valley, maybe even into the uh, eastern U.S. and this again could become a little bit more enhanced as we get closer and closer to the event. So again, it looks like another severe weather outbreak, including uh, certainly the threat for more tornadoes uh, from later tomorrow into the day on Wednesday. Well, let's take a look at some of the factors involved, and uh, we'll be using the Canadian model run from Zero Z last night. This is the operational version, and similar to prior severe weather outbreaks, we have vigorous support in the upper part of the atmosphere, and we have a clash of air masses with cold, dry uh, air to the north and west and warm and humid air to the south and east of that battle zone region. This is how we begin the day here on Monday, April 3rd. Let's look, look forward, uh, move forward here on the 500 millimeter height anomaly forecast maps. And again, as has been the case in recent outbreaks, we have a clash zone that sets up between a ridge of high pressure to the south and east and upper level low, strong upper level low to the north and west. And this sets up that clash zone right in this part of the nation, the heartland of the nation, which then tends to shift over the Mississippi Valley region and then into the Ohio Valley. This is tomorrow morning's forecast map. And here we go, by the time we get to tomorrow night, this upper level low, as has been the case in the past couple of uh, outbreaks, starts to turn to the north and west, and that sets up that real battle zone region right in the uh, Mississippi Valley region, uh, just to the west of the river and to the east of the, of the, of the river, uh, really extending from Wisconsin, southern Minnesota, all the way down to uh, Texas, in Louisiana for later tomorrow, tomorrow night. Let's move forward here. That upper level low shifts to the north and east. And by the time we get into Wednesday, some residual severe weather threat moving into the Ohio Valley. We'll have to see how that uh, unfolds over the next day or two. Strong ridging here centered over the uh, northeastern states by the time we get to midweek. And it looks like Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday will be very warm days indeed in uh, the mid-Atlantic Northeast U.S. in that D.C., Philadelphia, New York City, even Boston, Carter. And it's not uh, difficult to understand why when you see this ridging of high pressure in the upper part of the atmosphere. Let's go out a little bit farther in time. By the time we get to Thursday, that funnel system that will be a contributing factor to the severe weather outbreak earlier in the week in the uh, Mississippi Valley region reaches the eastern seaboard, maybe with some isolated strong thunderstorms. We'll have to see how that unfolds also on Thursday. And then a little bit cooler air moves in uh, on Friday uh, into the Mid Atlantic region, the Northeast, following the passage of that cool frontal system. At this point, it looks like high pressure may then take control for the upcoming Easter weekend. Saturday and Sunday in the Mid-Atlantic region. We'll see how that develops over the next couple of weeks, still several days away uh, uh, for us to take a look at that. Well, now let's take a look at 850 millibar temperature anomalies. And again, kind of a dichotomy here with the north and west part of the nation, colder, drier than normal here. Very chilly air continues to reside over California and the northwestern states, but we have, uh, have had quite a bit of warm and humid air down across the south central U.S. and 
hence a battle zone region. Here we go now into tomorrow morning and then into Tuesday, late Tuesday night. And here we go, that same situation with a warm and humid air pumping up into the Ohio Valley, the Mississippi Valley, cold, dry air coming in from the north and west. And just look at this class zone right here is a frontal system as of this particular time, late tomorrow night. Again, that cold, dry air charging to the south and east with warm and humid air out ahead of it, and hence another severe weather outbreak in the making here for later tomorrow, tomorrow night, into the day on Wednesday. This is now midday on Wednesday, and this is when that th uh, threat will shift to the Ohio Valley with that frontal system barreling in from the west to east. And again, look at this cold air outbreak for the western half of the nation that's compensated by warm air surging all the way up into the Great Lakes region. Again, uh, Wednesday and Thursday, probably 70s for D.C., Philadelphia, New York City, and very warm in the Ohio Valley as well. Go out a little bit farther in time. Here we go by Thursday morning. That front is closing in on the eastern seaboard on Thursday. Could be some isolated strong thunderstorms on Thursday along the uh, east coast here. We'll see how that uh, develops here, but a lot of cold air out across the western half of the nation uh, for much of this week. Well, let's wrap up by looking at the surface forecast maps from the Canadian model. On First of all, very uh, chilly start here in the Mid-Atlantic region. Frost in many of the suburbs of Philadelphia, for example, with temperatures near the freezing mark. But later today, this southwesterly flow of air will, excuse me, southerly flow of air, maybe southeasterly flow of air, will develop and enhance temperatures quickly, a quick rebound in temperatures from those frosty levels early today to well up in the 60s probably this afternoon, D.C., Philadelphia, New York City. Now, let's move forward here and we'll see the setup developing here. And again, we've talked about this warm and humid air rising up out of the Gulf of Mexico and starting to kind of add fuel to the fire here. This is tomorrow morning and we have this influx of warm and humid air into the Mississippi Valley region, the Ohio Valley. At the same time, we have this cold, dry air plunging to the south and east on the backside of a strong cold front. And here we go. This starts to set things up for later on tomorrow night into the day on Wednesday. Uh, first over the, the middle part of the nation, the Mississippi Valley region, for example, and then that uh, threat will extend into the Ohio Valley by the time we get to the uh, Wednesday, Wednesday night time frame. And here we go all the way out into Thursday. And whatever remains in that frontal system will then close in on the eastern seaboard, maybe with some isolated strong storms on Thursday. And there'll be cooler air mass on the heels of that uh, frontal system uh, moving into the northeastern quadrant of the nation by the time we get to the end of the work week here, now we're talking about late Friday, Friday night time frame with Canadian high pressure, chilly air mass indeed for the Great Lakes, the Northeast U.S. by the time we get to uh, Friday, Friday night time frame. It looks like from this vantage point, it's still several days away, this high pressure system will probably stay in control through the upcoming Easter weekend in the Mid-Atlantic region, Northeast U.S. There will be a storm system to monitor, probably holding down holding to the south in the southeastern part of the nation at the beginning of the upcoming weekend. So we'll monitor this uh, a pattern here over the next few days is to see what we may end up with uh, in the eastern part of the nation for the upcoming Easter weekend. Meanwhile, some milder air starts to push north up across the middle of the nation early this weekend, but still some cold, residual cold air around the northwestern U.S., with some snow at some of those higher elevation locations. That's it for now. For ArcfieldWeather.com, this has been meteorologist Paul Orion.